Hey everyone, welcome to another session of some Razzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we'll be talking about the uses of ionizing radiation. So put down today's title, it's going to be the uses of ionizing radiation. Whoops, before we move on, make sure that you've watched my previous videos on alpha, beta and gamma radiation, guys, because you need to know the properties of them before moving on to this one. Right, so let's get straight into it with the following scenario. Here, guys, is going to be a use of alpha radiation. You probably didn't know this, but all of your smoke alarms at your houses actually have alpha radiation inside them. How is it going to work? I'm going to explain it. It is quite difficult at the start, so make sure you watch this video a couple of times if you don't get it, or post below, and I'll try and help you as much as possible. So here, this is inside of a smoke alarm. So this is the inside of a smoke alarm. As you can see, we've got a battery supply over here. So this is like a supply over here. There we go, there's our battery, and it has connected to a terminal over here. There's a gap, and there's another terminal, then it goes all the way back to a detector, and that completes the circuit. The detector is connected to the siren, which obviously makes the sound that we hear when the smoke alarm goes off. Right, so how does it work? So obviously, in terms of physics, have a look. Over here, we have an alpha source. So this little uh, purple thing over here, that chunk over there, that's going to be the alpha source that is going to give out alpha radiation. So those lines, those arrows, show you that alpha radiation is going to be emitted. In between the gap, there is air particles. There's air particles right now. Think about it. If your uh, smoke alarm is on the ceiling, you know, obviously there's going to be air in between this gap over here. The alpha radiation will travel outwards and it will ionize those air particles. So those air particles become ionized. So that means they will change their charge. Yeah? So the charge might become positive or negative. There we go. Right. So right now, as you can see, you've got uh, some of them have turned positive and some of them have turned negative. Remember, they were actual gray before. Now they've changed uh, color. OK, so now, obviously, as you can see, the air has been ionized. They now gain a charge. So that means that, look, now they've changed charge. They will move to one of the terminals. So this terminal is positive. This terminal is negative. So let's say the positive one will move over there, and, and all the positive ones move in this direction. There we go, so they're all moving in this direction. There we go, and the negative ones will move this way. Okay, there we go. So look carefully, guys. So the positive ones move to one side, the negative one means to move to another side, and therefore there is now a flow of charge. So there is a, now a flow of charge. Therefore, there will be a complete circuit. So look, guys, now there's a flow of charge throughout this circuit again and again and again. So obviously, it's working now. But what happens when smoke enters the chamber? So what happens when smoke actually enters our smoke alarm? Right, so, okay, let's just say a little fire starts over here. So we're going to draw a little fire symbol over there. There's the fire. Where? Yeah, there's the fire. And obviously, a giant smoke particle enters the chamber. Here's a smoke particle. There we go. That's my smoke particle. Let's label that. Here's my smoke particles. So the smoke particle enters the chamber. It's going to do something. Well, look, well, as it enters the chamber, what happens is it will block off the radiation. So the radiation can't pass through it. So the alpha radiation can no longer pass through it. It is now blocked by the smoke particle. As you can see right now, the smoke has now entered the chamber and it is now blocked off the alpha radiation. So now look, guys, what's going to happen is obviously no ionization is taking place. So there is no ionization taking place. And if there is no ionization taking place, there is now no flow of charge around my circuit. And obviously, now there's no flow of charge. My detector will detect that change. So the detector will sense that drop in charge. And obviously, it then hits the siren and therefore the alarm goes off. Okay? Right, so I'll write that in words before we move on so we can have a full list. So, okay, so I'll put it all down here, loads of words, so I'll read it very slowly. Initially, alpha radiation ionizes the air, forming ions. The ions then move across the gap, therefore there is a flow of charge. When the smoke enters the chamber, it blocks off the alpha radiation, therefore no ionization occurs. There is no flow of charge then. And obviously, the detector senses a drop in the charge, and therefore sounds the alarm. And that's the reason why the alarm goes off, guys. It's quite high level, guys, so make sure you spend some time looking at the initial stage and the afterwards. Make sure you understand what the smoke is actually doing and what the alpha is actually doing here. Wonderful stuff. So look, guys, we've managed to explain how smoke alarms in our house actually works. Super. Okay, so moving on now. So what about um, in thickness of foil? So the thickness of foil. So you've probably all gone to the supermarket before and you've probably bought foil, yes? You know, the foil that you roll out for baking. 
yeah, I'm not a baker, but you know, it is what it is. If we actually have uh, the foil right now, it's a certain thickness. It's a certain thickness. How do they make it a certain thickness? Well, to make it a certain thickness, we can use the ionizing radiation. So we can make it the same thickness using the following. As you can see here on this diagram, on the right hand side, I've got loads of the metal here, and I've got some two rollers here, two rollers, and then we're gonna pass the metal into it, and obviously the rollers are going to squash it into the thickness that we need. As you can see, it's thicker on this side over here and thinner uh, as it enters. Um, then we're gonna place a beta source uh, afterwards, and it's obviously gonna emit beta radiation. So the beta radiation is gonna travel outwards and hit the Geiger counter. The Geiger counter, guys, is the detector. So this is the detector. Right, yeah, it's the detector. So right now, the beta radiation is traveling through it, and obviously it's going into the Geiger counter. Let's just say the Geiger counter, let's give it some fake numbers. Let's give it, say, say it's 100 on here, it's 100. This is, let's say, it's perfect thickness now. This is going to be perfect thickness. Okay, right, so the best bit about using the radiation is that you don't need someone to actually like, measure the actual thickness of the foil. We can use the Geiger counter to tell us if the foil is becoming too thick or too thin. So we can use the Geiger counter to tell us if the foil is becoming too thick or too thin. Hopefully you can guess by uh, the diagram that we have here. So let's talk about it then. So what happens when the foil is too thick? Well, think about it now. So look, I've got two scenarios here, when the foil is too thick and when the foil is too thin. When the foil is too thick, we know that um, the beta radiation will come out and obviously it's thicker now. So the Geiger counter, it, it will obviously, will more pass through or less? What do you think? Well, now it's thicker, what will happen is obviously less will pass through it. So the Geiger counter will drop down. So Geiger counter, let's say it might drop down to, just give it some numbers, 60. There we go, so it's dropped down. So Geiger counter reduces as obviously less goes through it, less goes through it. Happy with that from the start, as you can see, 100's passing through it when it's perfect thickness. Obviously, if I make it too thick, then obviously the Geiger counter will drop down in, in terms of its value. And what happens if the foil is too thin? Well, if the foil is too thin, guys, what will happen is loads more will enter the Geiger counter. So the Geiger counter will increase in terms of its reading. It will increase in terms of its reading. So it might drop up to 150, maybe 150. So this is a fantastic method in which we can measure the thickness of the foil simply by looking at the Geiger counter readings. So once again, this is perfect thickness and obviously too thick, the Geiger counter reduces because less can pass through it. The Geiger counter will go up if it's too thin, obviously because more can pass through it. Wonderful stuff here. All right, so before we go, let's have a quick recap from the start of today's lesson. So smoke alarms, as you can see, initially at the start, we have an alpha source in our circuit. It produces alpha radiation. They ionize the air. The air then travels across the gap, completing the circuit. And then when the smoke enters the chamber, guys, what happens is obviously all of that is blocked off, guys, because the smoke comes in. There we go, here's our smoke particle. Therefore, when the smoke particle enters the chamber, no ionization occurs. And when no ionization occurs, obviously, therefore, there's going to be a drop in the amount of charge flowing. The detector will sense that and hit the siren, hitting your alarm off. Superb. And look, guys, I've put it all on the right hand side so that you're able to explain it yourself. Wonderful. Next, we use beta radiation to determine the thickness of foil. As you can see here, we have the foil entering and there's two rollers and it passes straight through. We have a beta source and a detector on the bottom. Beta source can pass right through it. Uh, but then when the foil becomes too thick, obviously the Geiger counter will drop down. So the Geiger counter, initially it was 100, it's perfect foil right now. But if it becomes too thick, obviously the Geiger counter will drop down. Why? Because more beta radiation is absorbed. And if the foil is too thin, what will happen is the Geiger counter the value will increase, the value will increase, and obviously the reason why, it's because less of it is being absorbed here. There we go. And that's it for another session of Serazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep my channel going, and I'll hopefully see you soon with another cool video. Stay tuned, guys. Goodbye.